now what we need to do is take off, retake off the Caltrack bars. I mean, all this stuff, I didn't put the nut on this leaf spring, so all this side should come off easy. And then we gotta do the other side and the drive shaft we'll have to undo and what else brake lines and then the rear end will come out the leaf springs will come out and then we can cut out those or hopefully unbolt slash cut out those front spring hangers and then we're that we're gonna have to like rebuild or fix up i'm also gonna clean all the rubber out of the wheel wells you can see there's lots on the exhaust and up in the wheel wells all kinds of rubber probably clean that out paint everything i did paint the underneath there last year most of it so but i don't think i did the wheel wells uh, so yeah let's get uh, unbolting <laughs> Need a wrench. Take that off. And this is these are uh, Rancho RS9000 uh, single adjustable shocks that don't want to come off. There it comes. Caltrack bar will come off. There we go. All right, so we got. The U-bolts, we'll put those all together so nothing gets lost. And the washers, and then. Well, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to use a screwdriver or something. But I don't know if the reason why this is harder to get out, like I said before, you can see I had to like squish this here which I think I'll, I'll cut this or something, make it nicer uh, because this is all like stretched out or whatever. So I'll have to get a screwdriver to pop that out. I never put the nut on there. It's just in there. Yeah, this kind of like, I can't even. You gotta have this bolted like the right spot. Okay, so there's the leaf spring out again. I don't know if you can, you guys can see that, but look at how this hole is just, you know, that should be a nice circle and it's all stretched out. So is this one. I think it's because the leaf spring has a solid bushing and just over the last few years of obviously racing and things it's just uh, kind of stretch it all out so I'm gonna fix that I'm gonna weld like a big washer like a piece of piece of steel on here to like double it to make it thicker and then we'll do the same on this side I'm gonna remove these that uh, you probably can't see here but it's horribly welded here that I welded these subframe connectors in 30 years ago so that'll get all fixed up too and yeah this is probably the first time that this stuff's been out of the car since I put it all in there so that's pretty good so obviously this stuff I already pressed that bushing in that one so this other than just clean up the leaf springs I'll paint them clean up that's all powder coated so it, it'll just need to be cleaned that just that's all just gonna go back on the car there's there's nothing to do to that since I already pressed that bushing in on the other side I have to press the bushing in so I'll repeat I'll repeat this on the other side and then uh, I'll come back when we're ready to pull the diff out. I got the leaf springs on the other side out. And I unhooked the brake lines here at the at the diff because where did it go now? I made a I just made a little thing like that to loop them, just a little piece of brake line, so that it won't be just pouring, dripping brake fluid everywhere. I guess this vent tube is somehow connected. I'm gonna have to pull that off first. Oh, I got a screwdriver right there. There it is. Okay. So we gotta take this little vent hose off. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's off. So that's out of the way. Drive shaft is off. 
and it's just hung up there. You'll see it once the diff is out. And then I have the diff on some jack stands and of course the shocks. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna end up pulling the shocks out too. And then of course the tailpipes also have to come out. But let's put the, put that there and you can watch me take the diff out and hopefully not drop it on the ground, which would be bad. Or you can watch me drop it and then you can laugh at me. I don't know. Either way, whatever, you know, whatever works. Okay, so here we come. All right, so we made it to the ground. Now we just gotta carefully pull it out of here. So there it is. So this is a quick performance uh, nine inch that I got from quick performance before they were popular on street outlaws. And it has 35 spline uh, Mosher axles, uh, Willwood brakes, a strange aluminum center section with 370 gears and a spool and all that stuff which I bought everything from quick performance the whole the whole setup so yeah that's out so that's good we're out let's maybe go for a look see underneath let's see what we can see well, now that the rear end is out you can see the drive shaft just hanging and this is a cross member that I put in long time ago to relocate the shocks because on a Nova the shocks usually like come on they're staggered on this side of the frame and even though I didn't really need it for the tire I didn't need to do that but the the area of the inner fender was all rusty so I ended up cutting it out a long time ago and then it's it's mini tubbed right so the body's all mini tubbed right to the frame rail but Usually when you mini tub and to gain space, you A, move the leaf springs, which I never did, and you also notch the frame, which I never did. So the frame itself is still stock, just the wheel tubs. And there's lots of rubber in here, which I can clean out of there. And then three and a half inch dual exhaust going right to the back, which is one of the reasons why I have to do this underneath the rear end. Um, anti-roll bar is because if I ditch the tailpipes I could just put a traditional above type anti-roll bar in but I don't want to do that so yeah okay so next thing we're gonna do is look at those hangers at the front that I got to remove and then once those come out then pretty much the disassembly is done except I'm gonna disassemble this whole rear end like I want to take this rear end totally apart because I'm gonna clean it paint it uh, change the oil inspect everything plus I got to weld this this fill fill bung you know somewhere somewhere there there I don't know wherever wherever it fits the best it's kind of big I mean, maybe I didn't need to get such a big one but I guess it doesn't matter yeah so that's gonna go on there somewhere and then plus the crown gear is like right here so if I have this kind of over the crown gear, I'll be able to open this and inspect the inside of the rear end if I need to without taking it all apart. So, yeah. I also think that I'm gonna, I know Calvert, I don't know if it's necessary, but they reinforce these, they like weld tabs on top of here. Maybe I'll add that. Plus, I think I might have to add some kind of, um, hooks or loops or something onto the housing so that I can um, tie the car down in the trailer because once I put the anti-roll bar in, it's gonna be like right under the diff. I don't know if that's gonna interfere with my hold down straps. I guess I'll have to see. I don't want it to be like pulling down on the, uh, the anti-roll bar or 
bending it any kind of way. Not that, not that I don't think I think the straps could bend this because this is it's nice and thick, but I don't want it to be pulling on that. So, all right. So I'm going to get some tools and then start looking at how to get those brackets off. This is the hanger. Like you can see, it's even cracked right there. So there's a bolt there that holds it on and there's a bolt there and there used to be a bolt. You can actually see the old bolt. I never got it out of there, which I should have, but it's there. And then here's the terrible welding job that I did. But I'll tell you this much, I welded these subframe connectors on, I don't even want to know how long ago, and with a 110 MIG and as you can see they never, they never fell off. So. So anyways, I already tried on the other side just to see, and these bolts are just spinning, but it looks like, I mean, we don't know about this side yet, but it looks like once these come off, you can get in there and put a new, like, an encapsulated nut in there. So if they break, who cares? And I'm, I might, I'll have to cut them off anyways. Yeah, I mean, that one sounds like it's coming off, but I think it's just um, spinning. Yeah, and let's try this one. That one I can't even turn. Of course, it would be nice if they would just snap off and then that would make my job easier. You know what, let me get some some uh, spray juice. Uh, it's probably just spinning also, but... Yeah, just a spinning. So... I'm gonna have to cut these off somehow and then cut the welds, the shitty welds. And then, oh, there goes that nut. That's good. Okay, I got that out of there. And then these are gonna have to be, like I said, I'm gonna add pieces to them and whatnot. I could just make some new ones of these too, probably out of some steel, but we'll see. So first things first, I gotta get these out of here. I think I can kind of split these heads to start with this one. Now this one might be trickier to get at. I have to use a full on disc for that one. But we gotta cut this. just happened there because now it came all oh maybe there was a washer there that came out and cut off or something all of a sudden now it's like loose I should be able to just split this nut two pieces of it so this is a good way to if you can't get a bolt off you can just do this See, so 
that's loose now. I didn't hurt the bracket at all. And then I'll just have to do the same with this one. And then I still got to cut the, I got to cut through the rest of this weld area here. So I'm going to need a longer cutoff wheel and then I'll cut that one. Cut the other bolt off. It was a little harder than the first one just because of where it is. And then I um, ground the weld. Horrible, horrible welds. I think the reason that, well, like I said, the welder I had was kind of the shitty welder, but I, uh, I filled in the gap because there was like a gap at the front and the back. I think that's one of the reasons why it, uh, there's so much blobby weld in there. But like I said, it never, uh, it never came loose in all these years. It's been okay. I think I'm loose. I'm just, I'm still caught on some weld here. I figured I'd bring you back and it would just fall off, but I need a, I need something to pry a little bit better. Oh, there we go. Yeah, she's still holding on a bit. There. All right. So now you can see. So there, it is like an encapsulated type nut there, there. So the floor is still good. So I'll just have to get new ones of these. I'll have to get these out, and then here is where the third one went which then I welded and I'll just have to add metal and so I can weld it here or I could even make it so I could bolt it but I'll probably just bolt it like factory in those two spots and then clean this up and yeah, clean all these welds and I'll I'll have to make it I'll make this where did I put that bracket I'll get her up on the bench take a look at it like look at the holy moly look at that hole that hole, I mean, this hole is kind of the right size, just very oblong, but I mean, it's cracked here. And then this one is uh, stretched out like you wouldn't believe. So, like I said, what I want to do with these is I'll weld a nice piece of thick steel on here and drill a hole. Same with this side, I'll weld a big piece on here. And Like I said, I could, I could probably just get steel and make them and... I could order new ones of these, they do sell them, but I think we'll just work with what we got here, sandblast these, clean them up, and, uh, and make them better. Over on the driver's side, as you can see, I got that one up too. This one actually came out a little easier, and I fished out all the old broken bolts or cut off bolts. And uh, this side of the rocker here is good. The other side has a little rust spot, which I'll probably fix. And then, you know, clean all this up and paint it before I put it back together. I'm just going to have to source some of these encapsulated nuts that go on there. And then while this is apart, what I'll do here is I'll clean up these welds and then I'll weld this so that it's good, even though it's only been welded like that. And then, like I said, I'll have to do something with where the original hanger bolted here. Maybe I'll bend a tab down and put a bolt here right and then it'll be bolted in like factory style so at least it could be removed if need be let's see how bad this one is so this one oh, it's pretty so you can see how stretched out that hole is how stretched out. this one's really really bad well this one's crazy how stretched out it is I took the rear end apart as you can see and basically just spent some time cleaning. I also cleaned up, like removed the paint from here, and then I removed the paint from here and kind of figured out where that, oh, where'd I put it now? Where that fill plug thingy, this thing is gonna go. So it's gonna go like there. So it'll look like that. Oh, or it'll fall on the ground and then be no good. Okay, 
So I kind of did all that stuff off camera since that's boring and just me cleaning things. I cleaned up the center section, which is over there, which you'll see when I put it back together. Uh, the axles, Mosier 35 spline, and they actually look really good. I was kind of worried maybe there might be a little twisting in there because I've had them for quite a long time in there. And then, okay, so I had these, these, and you remember how they were all stretched out and gross and broken and I was gonna fix them and all that kind of stuff. But then I needed to get new bolts and washers. So I ended up finding them on Summit. So this is the new bolts. And then these washers, let me put it down here. The washers are not washers, but nuts basically. They're special, see they're like this. See how they got that little loop-de-loop -loop in them? Well, you can't just buy these off the shelf from what I know, you gotta buy them, you know, restoration parts. So then I decided the only one place I found them was Summit. And of course that's only like $20 for the bolts and the things. So then I just decided to order new ones of these. So these are new. So, and I also ordered Calvert U-bolts. They're gold. I love gold around here. And then I also got, I had a um, O2 sensor bung. So I figured out what size it was and I just got back from the parts store actually. So I took an O2 sensor bung and I found a plug for an oil pan that's exactly the same. M18 by 1.5. And so this is gonna screw in there. And this is gonna be a drain, which is gonna go uh, here on the bottom. So it's gonna work as a drain plug. It's also gonna work as a like jack locator so that when I jack the car up, you know, it'll grab on that. Because now with that anti-roll bar there, you know, the anti-roll bar is gonna kind of be right around here. And then, you know, it might make it hard to jack up without hitting the anti-roll bar. So if I have the drain plug kind of right here, that'll be kind of a good locator to jack it up. So let's see, let's get the same, oops, same side. Okay, so here is the new one. Here is the old one. Oh, and they, they don't quite look the same. Huh, well that's interesting. But they do say that these are for, these are for 67 to 69 Camaro firebird and obviously this is a nova but they are the you know novas and camaros and that are the same what they do say about these is if you use these it's going to lower the front spring eye half an inch which or basically it'll lower your car half an inch which i'm fine with but i think the car might have already been lower just because of how stretched out these holes are but yeah that's weird that they look so much different this is the first time i'm really looking at them so what i'm going to do here when i originally put the subframe connectors in I cut this off and I just welded this mess you can see here to the subframe connector. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna fold this flat so that this will bolt bolt to the subframe connector. So then it'll, it'll go in with one, two, three bolts, just like factory. The only difference is this will be on the side of the subframe connector, which will make it easier because then I can these can get put on the leaf spring and then the leaf spring can go in and just get bolted up. So service ability wise, it'll be a lot better. Plus I'll anti seize the bolts. And then the next time, if I ever have to take the rear end out again, I can kind of just drop it out as a whole unit. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today is start working on the differential, uh, maybe get that, this hole drilled maybe get this hole drilled, kind of start figuring all that stuff, maybe get some stuff tacked on. We'll see, uh, we'll see what we can get done today. It's, it turned super cold again, and it's like minus 10 Fahrenheit, minus 25 Celsius right now, plus the wind chill. So I almost wasn't gonna come out in the garage today because I figured Ugh, it's just gonna be too cold, but I thought I'll come out for a couple hours and try to get a little bit of stuff done. So let's get to work. I was just taking a look at these and I actually took the one and stuck it up in there, which it won't fit because of this piece here, but 
It definitely is, uh, if we compare these, if we put, line up that where it bolts, I mean, look at the difference. The hole is way higher than it even was here with it all like stretched out. So you can see it's quite a bit, which I'm fine with because I want to lower the rear end. I want the rear end of the car to sit lower. So this is gonna, with the sliders, that lowered it like three quarters of an inch. And then that lowering it, that'll lower it a little bit. And I mean, if you were using these and you didn't want to lower it, I guess what you would need to do is kind of space these. You know, you'd have to put a spacer under here, spacer under here, or at least under this one to kind of get it up into that same space. Cause like I said, you can see the difference here. So if we just put this down, you know, so that it's closer so that the holes kind of line up. Look at how much different it is. So you'd have to just space these. Like this is flat here. This is not flat here. So yeah, but this is all they sell. They don't sell Nova ones as far as I know. They only sell these ones. So um, here's the part number from Summit for them. They're $60 for the pair. Yeah, so what we're working with i mean if it really didn't work or was really bad i guess i could go back to the stock ones but i don't really want to do that and yeah all right so let's do something we got the spot marked here where we're going to put the the filler cap a roux in there put a little bit of juices on there and try to line this up just been the bit basically in there like that and then just got a welder in so I went ahead and I drilled another hole in the bottom with the hole saw smaller hole saw which perfectly fits this O2 bung and is it gonna fall Let me get the, and then I can put this plug in there and now I have my drain plug slash locator for the jack basically so it'll kind of just be like that yeah and then up here we got this one now the only problem with the big one is i made the hole i wanted the hole to be so that this would slip in there because this obviously isn't very level and flat this opening but the only hole saw that i had there was either one that was way way too small or one that was just slightly too big so there's a bit of play in there so welding it will be a little trickier but as far as gaps go but this is pretty thick oh my god this is pretty thick steel and this is really thick steel so i don't think it's going to be a problem to weld i'm ready to weld this on no oh, usually I don't like to film when I'm welding because I'm not, you know, the world's best welder and then it just stresses me out. So, but we'll, we'll do a little bit and see what happens. Come on. 
my only problem here is this thing being so big, it's hard, it's gonna be hard to move it around. Well, it's going okay, I'd say. I think I need to, sometimes I think I need to stand up, but I got some like porous spots. I don't know if that's from dirt. But no, I did clean it good. Huh, okay, well, it's not bad. Except I don't know what it just did right there. I really need like a, you know, a dedicated welding table of some sort would be nice. I don't know if it's just welding kind of crappy because of the, it started out really good and then there's a couple spots where it kind of got shitty. Yeah, take this glove off here. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know if that's the metal, you know, because this is dirty old, you know, grease. I mean, I cleaned it really good, but, but I got to reposition. So what I'm going to do now is I'll reposition and I'll finish welding. I got it welded. I don't know. Like this is so frustrating to me. Like I know I don't practice welding enough, but I mean, it's like a new piece of metal, you know, and yeah, the rear end housing's old and stuff, but still it just, I don't know. I'll show you, but it just did not weld good. Like it welded, but you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's me or if that's the metal. I don't, I don't know. But I guess I'm gonna fixture up this other one and, and I don't know, at least I'll get it tacked in and see what happens. It's getting ready to weld this on and realize that, well, it's, it's, well, maybe I can get it out, hold on. So I think I have to reposition this thing. Anyways, so the ground wire was not connected into here. So I'm thinking maybe that's why it wasn't working good. Because now it's back in. It's definitely welding a lot better. I mean it could still be better, but it's definitely welding and not like making that weird, I don't know, porous whatever it was doing. So either that bottom piece was just very dirty, the metal, or I don't know. But it seems to be better now. So I got this thing about, I don't know, a third of the way welded. So I'm gonna weld the rest of it on and then that'll be done. Definitely could have turned out better. I also had to fill in a gap because of that bigger thing, the hole saw. So I mean, that kind of sucks for TIG welding when you gotta fill a gap in. But, you know what, the plug goes on, it's on there. I put the other plug at the bottom here in. So that's the drain. This is the fill. I think it'll work. So the only other thing, like, I still have to weld on to the rear end these brackets. So hopefully they're gonna go better because it's also not a butt weld, like these are, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I guess the one on the bottom, but obviously the one on the bottom, that, that ground must have been an issue because it definitely welded a lot better. Like it welded good, just the welder, you know, could have welded better, but like I said, trying to fill that gap in was kind of crappy and yeah. So anyways, it's welded, it's in. I mean, regardless for me, I don't care if it's got dime stacks and like perfect welds. I just really like TIG welding more than MIG welding just because it doesn't make sparks and a mess and and uh, overall it still looks better, you know, whatever. Anyways, okay, so that's done and that's done and I don't know what we're going to do next. I threw a little bit of uh, self etching primer over the metal where I welded it. I guess I could have missed a spot, but and there, definitely TIG welding stuff looks better once. Well, it has a little bit of paint on it, but the next thing to weld on the diff will be those brackets. And I haven't 100% figured out exactly how I'm going to do it. So it goes on here like this. Of course, it has to be centered, right? So I could go kind of like right there, just over the housing, just in front 
of this plug. I could also go further forward like that a little bit, which kind of brings the, the anti-roll bar down a little bit, like there, and forward a little bit, which I'm not 100% sure if forward a little bit is going to be good for where the where the bars go you know so I think I'll kind of go like there maybe just slightly farther forward than where you know then it's not all the way back just slightly like this I'll probably go which will give enough for here and then there is a slight you know like half of an inch under here where I could lower this bar down a little bit but I don't think that's really necessary. So, but instead of doing that now, ah, because what I want to do is I want to tack those brackets on to the diff. Then I want to put the diff in and then make sure that, you know, my clearances are going to be good. And then I also have to figure out where this upper cross member is going to go that the tabs are welded to, which then the arms go to. So in order to do that, I have to have the leaf springs in so that I can put the leaf springs in and put the diff in because what I'm going to do is get the leaf springs all back in with these new pocket things all bolted in basically the leaf springs are in except for the sliders won't be welded to the frame yet and then I want to put the housing in fit everything then take the housing out then fully weld those brackets on so what I'm going to do now put you down here is I'm going to take these and start modifying them now. Like I said, I have to. I'll just have to take the cutoff wheel and cut, cut along this line here, just to sort of free this up so I can flatten this out. And then probably once this is flattened, I'll be able to get in there and like weld it back together. What I also want to do, which I'm not sure if I have, is I want to, I want to put a washer like this, here, and then I want to weld it all, all the way around so that this offers extra strength, basically making this thicker so that it doesn't get like, hopefully it doesn't get like this one where it's all uh, stripped out of there. It's on this washer, but I don't know if I have more. I probably do, but, so I'll get a cutoff wheel and we'll start getting these ready. We're just gonna go kind of along this existing cut here. Put this in the vise and pretty much just bend it straight. Okay, so that's pretty good, and then we'll have to take the hammer and just flatten this out. Okay, so now, now we got a straight piece. Let's test it. Now, so that's lined up to the original holes and then now you see this bracket is pointing right to the subframe connector. So. I'll basically just, I don't know. Like I could just drill a hole and put a nut and a bolt, but I wanted to use the factory clip things that the other holes use. So we'll see, we'll figure that out. But, uh, and then you can definitely tell the hole here, look how far up it is. It's like way up here when before it was like, you know, here. So it definitely will lower the front of the leaf spring some, which I hope is gonna be okay. But uh, there we go. So that's uh, that's done now. Only thing I got to do to these still is weld on the washers, which I don't know if I have any. So while I was under the car there, I started thinking about how I was going to scrape the rubber off the inner wheel wells, which there's a whole bunch now. But I thought I saw something. I thought I'd show you guys. So there's like the original paint right there original orange which I guess was under you know 
the undercoating or whatever that's original. So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, you can see how much rubber is in here. So I'm just scraping all that off. You know, I mean, even the exhaust is just caked. So while we have it apart, we might as well do a really good de rubbering. Even the body here is just covered in rubber. Look at that. Race cars. I finished scraping, well, mostly finished scraping the rubber out. It's, uh, that's from the one wheel well. It's got to be a pound at least there. And then I got myself, I went yesterday to Canadian Tire and picked up what Vice Grip Garage calls the Cheek Poker 2000 or 9000 or something. One of these big wire wheels, which I've never really put on a grinder before. It actually came with this one too, a finer one. And uh, I use it, oh, it's very dusty. I use it to clean up in here. And wow, does it ever work good? Like it took most of the rust off. And then as you can see, there's a, maybe you can see there, there's like a big rust hole right here. It's not too bad. It's just on that outer layer, but I think maybe I'll make a little piece and weld a little patch in there before I put this back together and then spray this with some of that rust inhibiting primer or whatever. And then with some black paint. You know, I mean, it's the car is almost 50 years old and it's, you know, pretty good shape under there. Most spots and it doesn't see the outside. This car really hasn't been winter driven or seen the outside in the winter time, basically since, uh, I don't know, 19, 1990, probably somewhere around there. So it's been 30, 33 years of not, not being outside in the cold. So. No, no surprise. It's any any rust that it has has probably been there from the first you know 10, 15 years the car was out on the road. But yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little patch for that, fix that up, and then like I said, paint all that up, and uh, and we'll be able to mount these, make these things ready to mount. So I don't even know what I'm saying, but you know, I maybe you know, I don't know.